Alrighty, here is uh, my motion mixer tutorial number two. This tutorial is going to be concerned with creating an actor and creating some motions in motion mixer. <clears throat> As in the last tutorial, motion, motion mixer, you can bring it up by hitting F2 on the keyboard, brings up this interface. As you can see, everything's grayed out because you have to have what's called an actor by hitting create actor uh, in order to save motions and mix them together with motion mixer. So let's do that right now. I have my dragon here again. There he is. And um, I'm going to go into bone x-ray mode so I can see all the bones. I'm going to select one of the bones here, hit the middle mouse button to select these. And now holding the middle mouse button, I'm going to drag over top. That will select all the different bones that are not locked down. <clears throat> and we can hit F2 because this character, I just want these bones to be uh, part of him. If you had a character that had IK and goals and different weird things going on, uh, different controls that you wanted, you would select those as well. And with all the items that you want selected, hit Create Actor and give him a name. His name is Sorn. And hit OK. All right, and now you see the actor is listed as active. And now you have all these different options coming up here. Free Actor will basically delete the actor and add items is useful if you have items that you want to add maybe a goal that's been added or something or something that you didn't get to select remove items of course will remove it these other items I don't really deal with too much so I won't get into those here the actor map you can tell which channels to turn on and off alright so we have the actor active <clears throat> and um, if you when you have the actor active it's completely controlled by motion mixer so when we move something for example, if we go down here and move his arm, as you can see, I'm trying to move it and it's not going. And that's because he's activated and is, he's being controlled by the mixer. So in order to actually manipulate him, <clears throat> you're going to have to turn the actor off. All right, so let's go ahead and I'll, I'll just pose him and we'll get like a, a, a real basic action here. It doesn't have to be anything special. It's just going to... It's really just going to be two basic poses. So I will move this guy around. The thing I like about animating uh, FK in Lightwave is that you can multi-select different bones and rotate them at the same time and they will <clears throat> they will rotate together additively as in these fingers. You can curl the fingers just by grabbing all the finger bones at once and curling them by just just dragging the rotation handle. All right, so we have uh, pose one, and we'll go to 20, frame 20, and then we'll drag this down. And we'll move his tail down. This is just just a test, really, just to show you something. This is not meant to be any kind of real animation. All right, so now so we have some sort of an action. It's crappy, but it's some sort of an action. Now, how do we get this into Motion Mixer? Well, that's pretty easy. Just bring up Motion Mixer and uh, just hit Create Motion. And then you're going to get uh, this thing here. <clears throat> create Motion from uh, Actor Items. We usually have that selected. Uh, you could just select just the wings, for example. Uh, if you had those items selected, it would create the motion just for those items. Maybe you want to do a walk cycle and you're planning on just animating the legs with motion mixer you don't care about the arm animations you could use selected channels there and stuff like that but I'm gonna do everything that is part of the actor and I will call this fly one and um, start frame is at zero end frame in this case is 20 and clear channels what this will do is you what you normally want is after you created a motion clip often you want to <clears throat> delete all the animation after that is done so that you can go ahead and create more motion clips. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked. If you don't, then it will leave the animation in Lightwave and you can continue to, to manipulate it. Uh, hit OK. And as you can see, Fly 1 is there. And to prove that the motion has been, see, everything's been deleted, there's no keyframes left and he's snapped back to his normal position. Now we have the motion here and we can add it. And we can turn the actor on. And now when we scrub, we will see our motion and we can do things like for example we can cycle it right click on it and add a pre-behavior 
and edit post behavior. And for post behavior, we'll do repeat, or in this case, we'll do oscillate. So there you can see how quickly and easily you can cre uh, create an actor, create a motion for that actor, and then go ahead and uh, uh, put that motion in, into use. Um, the only problem is uh, these motions will be here as part of the scene file. Uh, when you go ahead and save the scene, if you have motions and stuff in here, the motions will be listed here, but that will quickly uh, increase the uh, size of your scene file. So let's... Um, let's right click on that and remove it. Um, so it's very useful to actually save these motions to disk so that you don't have to bring every single motion in every single time when you open the scene file. Um, it's very easy to save the motion that you have uh, to disk. Go ahead and, and add the motion. I usually just add just that motion by itself. What it will do is it will save all these motions here as one big clip. Um, we're just going to add this this one thing and then we'll go to save motion and you can go ahead and save it just like a regular file. And if you wanted to load a motion, you could just click on load motion. I think I showed that in the last one. This thing says that it has... I'm not going to load that one. Where are we at? It should, should work. I must have made these... It's, it's telling me that uh, I have items that are not part of the current actor. It could be because I made these motions with a different version of this actor, or it could be that I have some bones that were locked and not visible, that were not selected. And if you just say yes, it'll bring up this requester that shows you if there's if there's missing relationships, you'll see them here. So, for example, these things here are are not um, the source motion contains channels for these items, but they don't exist in the current actor. Um, so you, but these I recognize as being uh, items that are just control bones that I had locked. They're not going to affect the animation, so I'll just go ahead and load it. And I'll add it here. Remove that. So you can see what... Here we go. And so you can see what a, uh, a motion looks like when it's loaded from disk. It's very useful to do this. Um, very easy to set up an actor. Very easy to set, uh, create and uh, load a motion. Next time I'll show tell you some of the not so good features of this tool motion mixer the little gotchas that you gotta work around but these are the basics you can get up and running with this in no time flat